You've all covered everything. I mean, the most extreme stories that we, as a nation, as a culture, just can't get enough of. What stories have stuck with you that have affected you personally? Uh, I covered a story about a year and a half ago, a, a story of domestic violence in the, in the Phoenix area, terrible story about a guy who went, went on this shooting spree and killed about five or six people, one of whom was a friend of mine. Uh, one of the people he yep, killed? Yep, first time I ever knew anybody who was murdered. Uh, and we ended up doing the story, I mean, I went to Phoenix to go to Steve's funeral and we ended up doing an hour on it um, uh, about two weeks later. And the great thing about it was that domestic violence, which is so frequently in the background of stories that we tell mm -hmm. on Dateline, was in this case, the story. And the woman who was at the center of the story, which was the woman that the, the shooter had been trying to find and hadn't found her, which is why she's still alive, we interviewed her. And so she told the story of what it was like to be married to this abuser who ended up becoming a murderer. And then I ended up interviewing my friend's fiance, which was uh, a weird thing. And we just presented that story, this is the good thing, we just presented that story at the uh, National District Attorneys Association, which was doing a workshop on domestic violence. And, uh, and I, uh, Steve would have been thrilled that, that all of that was actually did some good. Domestic yeah. violence is an issue that has just, uh, I, you, you've no idea until you, until you see these court dockets, until you see these cases that have to be solved over and over and over again. It is such a scourge. And it, I mean, it's worldwide, obviously. And, and I think we're all aware that we come into these stories, we're strangers, yeah. talking to people who have had the worst moment imaginable in their lives. The loved ones have been ripped away from them. And, we're gonna, and they're gonna sit down and talk to us for two hours. And I wonder, are we exploiting them? And at the end of the day, I don't think so, because think it's, so. it's this kind of cathartic experience to sit down with us, strangers as we are, to talk about this awful thing that happened to yeah. them. Yeah, no one's ever said to me, I shouldn't have done that, no. for real. No, like, it's usually, never happened, not usually, once. They're usually pretty happy about it. Yeah, thank you. And of course, obviously, like you, know, like, you know, we don't pay anybody. I mean, people are on Dateline because they want to be. And in many cases, that's the longest and most elaborate retelling of their story and their loved one's story that's going to happen because a lot of people aren't going to get in the paper. The killers the might say, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. As, but as, not, as, not the victim's <laughs> families. Do you take the work home? You're a mother of six. And whether we're talking about murders or, I, I mean. <laughs> now look at her. I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> do you take this stuff home? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, the, the cases that we cover are pretty compartmentalized. So, you know, somebody, usually it was for a reason, not that the reason was the right reason, but it was a husband did something to his wife because of money or there was revenge or jealousy or something that's kind of isolated. Um, the thing that scares me are serial killers and random attacks. That's what keeps me up at night is, you know, when it could happen to anybody because the other cases I feel like this happened because of something in your life that is not going on in my life. So. It's easier to detach yourself. Um, the young people crimes really get me, the teenagers. That's, those are the ones that I have a hard time um, getting out of my head. Like when a 16-year-old cheerleader is shot through her house by her ex-boyfriend, and he mm. it just happens to hit her in the head while she's sleeping, and she dies. And then I have to interview her mom. You know, that's like, all I have to do is put myself in that position. Like, what if that happened to my daughter? And then I almost break down at that point, because it's just so horrible to think of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to find, when you're talking to these people, you have to find some middle ground between, you know, being completely like, immune to what you're hearing, because you're hearing, as Dennis said, like, it's the worst thing that ever happened to them. And, and there's this myth out there that if the, if the guilty person is caught and prosecuted and locked up, that somehow, you know, we're even. Well, we're not. People no. will never get over no. that kind of thing. And, uh, but you also see, at the same time you hear these, these terrible stories of things that people have gone through. You also see these stories of tremendous strength and perseverance and, 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 mm -hmm. and, 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 and people who sort of, you know, find a power in themselves that they didn't know they had. And that's all. That, and they that's, want to make change. Yeah, you know, that's, they use that's that, great to see. That energy that they have from what's yeah. happened to them and they, they make positive change. Yeah. How about you, Keith, the story? Oh, there are just so many of them. Uh, that, His voice, uh, isn't it like you can't believe it's for real? <laughs> <laughs> Every little time. <laughs> I, this is going to sound silly, and I don't mean it. It, it isn't. It isn't silly. I've always been an enormous fan of Dr. Seuss uh, because Dr. Seuss's nonsense sort of makes sense of everything. 
And the stories that affect me most are stories that were a little bit like the, his, his, his story about Horton. Horton, here's a who. Oh. And that's when I think about good detectives. They're like Horton the elephant. Um, and and the, their, their theme is a person's a person, no matter how small. Um, and it's really a kind of a key to the criminal justice system. If there isn't justice for the least of us, there isn't justice for anybody. And, um, and, and I have a feeling that that's why people watch programs like ours is because they want to know that there is justice available for everybody. That and something's working correctly. I want to say right now, because we're talking about Keith's voice, um, <laughs> I was just, I, was just tell, I told Keith this today, but now I'm going to tell all of you, which is if you think Keith's voice is great for <laughs> Dateline, and it is, then you need to download Keith's podcast, which just came out a couple of weeks ago, called The Thing About Pam. Uh, Debuted because, at number one. Because it's, it's the number one podcast right now. When you listen to it, you'll understand why. Um, it's based on a story that we've covered on Dateline, but even if you haven't seen the Dateline episode, you'll, you'll get a big kick out of it. And as great as it is on, on television, it's 10 times greater uh, in, in your earphones. <laughs> there you are. I'll slip 20 bucks a little later. <laughs>